there's a huge misconception in young earth creationism. See, young earth creationists are pre presenting the idea that there's a significant amount of evidence that disproves evolution. Ironically enough, their whole argument is based off a 2,000 year old Bible. See, it's not that young earth creationists are just rejecting the idea outright about evolution. It's them conforming to society. And society has two really, really bad inaccuracies and stereotypes about evolution. One is evolution explains how life began. Evolution does not explain how life began. Evolution explains the varieties in life. Two, evolution states that organisms can adapt to their environment. Evolution does not state that organisms can adapt to the environment. Evolution basically chooses what organisms live and what organisms die out. Before going on to the, the, the complexity of these different processes of evolution, I, I first want to give you the basic fundamentals about what exactly evolution is. In biology, evolution is the process of change in the inherited traits of a population of organisms from one generation to the next. The genes that are passed on to the organism's offspring produce the inherited traits that are the basis of evolution. These mutations in genes can produce new or altered traits in organisms. For this revelation, which remains one of the most important, revelations in biology, we have to thank Charles Darwin, uh, who first identified the process of evolution in his revolutionary 1859 book, The Origin of Species. Uh, Darwin came to understand the process of evolution because he spent most of his adult life and childhood life obsessed with observing nature. Uh, he studied barnacles, earthworms, rocks, birds, tortoises, fossils, fish, insects, and to even some extent his own family. Uh, he kept important notes on his observations during his voyage of the Beagle about adaptation, survivability, and population ratios. Charles Darwin really is the father of evolution as we know it. Natural selection is a prominent driving mechanism of evolution. Natural selection is, is which a process causing heritable traits that are helpful for survival and reproduction to become <laughs> more common in a population and harmful traits to become more rare. This occurs because individuals with helpful traits are more likely to reproduce successfully so that so that are more individuals in the next generation inherit these traits. Grape-like sharks represent a great example of natural selection. Um, Grape-like sharks possess this type of camouflage called color shaping. Grape-like sharks have a, a dark gray top and a white belly and there's a reason behind this. When viewed from above, their dark gray top blends in with the dark seafloor. And when viewed from below, their white belly blends in with the light surface. <clears throat> this allows for their prey to not easily spot the shark. Thousands of years ago, the sharks who didn't possess their genetic mutation die out because of starvation, because their prey easily spotted them. And the sharks who did have gen genetic mutation thrived and were able to reproduce a lot more. Um, natural selection isn't the survival of the fittest, it's who can survive in their environment. Take a look in the mirror. The face you see is rather different to that of a Neanderthal. Why? With features that can vary somewhat in form without affecting function, such as the shape of the skull, this must solely rely on the biological evolutionary process known as genetic drift. Genetic drift is just mutations that become fixed in the population. A mutation is a DNA error such as um, a blue lobster, six fingers, or mental retardation. So when having six fingers becomes the norm in humane society, then that's genetic drift. Um, DNA is the chemical in your cells that tell them how to grow and function. Uh, your DNA contains cogent information on how to build you. Your DNA uh, is different than that, say, a flower 
which is why you look and function different than the flower. Um, single cell creatures like amoebas create offspring by copying its DNA. And if all goes well, it will have an exact copy of itself. Unfortunately, things in nature are not always perfect. And like I said, DNA errors can occur. When DNA is passed over to produce offspring, errors can occur. And random alleles can appear, therefore producing different traits. And these mutated traits slash errors can possibly become fixed in the population, creating new types of organisms. Genetic drift is survival of the lucky. Gene flow is a form of biological evolution. It is a prominent factor in the driving mechanism for biological evolution that we see today. Gene flow is just a transfer of genes from one population to another, creating altered or new traits in organisms. Imagine two populations of squirrels on opposite sides of a river. The squirrels on the west side have bushier tails than those on the east side as a result of different genes that code for tailed bushiness. If a tree falls over the river and the squirrels are able to walk across and mate with each other population, the next generation of squirrels on the east side may have more bushy tails than those in the previous generation and the west side squirrels might have fewer bushy tails. This is known as the process of gene flow. Take a break and just enjoy the beautiful wildlife and landscape that Earth engulfs us with. Um, every living thing that we see in present day have evolved from several processes of evolution and not just one, ranging from thousands and millions of years ago. Uh, natural selection is just one link to the current chain of life. Animals that we see in today's society may have evolved from genetic drift, gene flow, sexual evolution, natural selection, or some other form of evolution that scientists have yet to discover. It's truly amazing. Thank you.